Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back to Awakened Faith Channel. In today's video, we will listen to the sharing from Father Chris Alar. I had a vision where I saw a missile with a red banner and a black swastika on it. Then, I heard the Holy Spirit say, There's going to be an attack centered on the belief of being the superior being. I don't think God was referring to Germany specifically, but using World War II imagery to illustrate the idea of superiority behind the attack. Next, I saw half of an apple, sliced down the middle, revealing the core, seeds, and stem. This, I believe, represents something being exposed at its core. Following this, I received a specific message about an attack on New York City, accompanied by the sound of rumbling and crumbling foundations. I also heard the phrase, holy hand grenade, which I interpret as a symbolic way of indicating the attack will be driven by a form of religious zeal, not just anger. This term may seem strange and is a reference from a film, but it underscores the religious motivation behind the action. Then, I heard the instruction to pray against this attack and for the protection, wisdom, and guidance of God's people in New York City. I want to share a vision I had recently. Sometimes, the enemy's actions seem overwhelming and frightening. I saw a vision of a large spiderweb sack filled with Nerf gun bullets, which I believe represented demonic forces. After this vision, I heard the Holy Spirit say, The fiery darts. Scripture tells us that faith is our shield against the fiery darts of the enemy. When we stand against the devil in faith, believing in God's word and trusting in his character and abilities, the enemy's fiery darts are like Nerf bullets. They hit us and bounce off. Regarding the vision and prophetic word about New York City, I want to clarify that I don't claim to know exactly what it means. It could be more metaphorical than it seems, despite the physical language used. This attack might not be a literal one, but could be political, ideological, or even medical. I'm sharing what I believe the Holy Spirit has asked me to share, and I encourage you to pray about it and seek His guidance. The Holy Spirit did give me a timeline, which I'll share later. But first, I have a few more things to share. As I saw these images and heard these prophetic messages, I began to question why there's so much evil in the world and why it seems like forces are working together to make things worse. The answer, I believe, is that they are working together, Satan and his demons, as Ephesians 2.1.2 explains, are at work in the world. It can seem like people are collaborating to create evil because a demonic spirit is working behind the scenes, like a chess game where the devil tries to play against the Lord. However, the devil doesn't realize he's already defeated because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. That's the good news. While the devil tries to work together with his demons, they are disorganized compared to God's orderliness. God is organized, and his angels know what they're doing, whereas demons are often in chaos. Despite their attempts to create havoc, God's plan prevails. Now, how can we, as the body of Christ, work together as we're meant to? The key is unity with other believers. Often, disunity hinders us from fulfilling our collective purpose. Let's strive to be united in faith and purpose, working together for God's kingdom. We should be united around the message of the gospel. However, we often let non-essential doctrinal differences, traditions, or denominational practices divide us. We might see errors in other denominations or theological stances and conclude that we can never work together or even speak to each other. Sometimes, we even criticize others. But if someone truly trusts in Jesus Christ, we can and should be united with them. We need to remember that we are not perfect either. Sometimes we become prideful, believing our theology is the only correct one. We might open the Bible just to reinforce our existing beliefs, instead of allowing God to teach us new things. The Holy Spirit wants to lead us and unite us as believers. Philippians 2, 1 turn 8 emphasizes the importance of encouragement love, and fellowship in Christ. One major issue that causes disunity is politics. Political differences can make us refuse to be unified, even though we should still work together to spread the gospel, fellowship, and love each other with the love of Christ. We all have areas in our hearts that God is still working on. 
Disunity is one of the devil's biggest wins, as it makes us vulnerable to his attacks. When we refuse to walk in unity through disagreements, misunderstandings, or arguments, we are not acting in faith. True unity in the gospel requires us to be of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, and intent on one purpose. We start to lose unity when we lose sight of our shared purpose, to know and believe in God. God tells us that we are meant to be His witnesses. This is the Great Commission, where we are to share God's love through Jesus Christ, the message of redemption, forgiveness, and salvation. When our focus shifts away from this purpose, we start nitpicking and looking at unimportant details in other Christians' lives, and we become unwilling to walk in unity with them. We are not walking in the same spirit. The scripture instructs us to do nothing out of selfishness or empty conceit, which is challenging. However, the love of Jesus can help us. With humility, we are to consider others as more important than ourselves, which is even harder. But again, the love of Jesus enables us to do this. Verse 5 says, To have the same attitude as Christ Jesus, who, despite being in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Instead, he emptied himself, took the form of a servant, and humbled himself to the point of death on a cross. To walk in unity, we must focus on Jesus on the cross, making everything about him, and continually believe in what the Word says about Jesus and our righteousness through faith. When our hope and faith are in Jesus, it becomes easier for the Holy Spirit to fill us with God's love, allowing us to overflow with that love and walk in unity, even when others make mistakes, misjudge us, or are unkind. Regarding the timeline, I heard from the Holy Spirit about New York. He said, something would happen within the next month and a half. This is very specific, so I encourage you to pray against the enemy's work. Sometimes God allows things to happen to shake things up, but we can pray that God's will prevail, not the devil's. I feel assured by the Holy Spirit that he hears these prayers. Dear Lord, thank you for your boundless love and grace. We come before you with hearts full of gratitude for your unending mercy and faithfulness. Guide us in your wisdom. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us to walk in your truth. Strengthen our faith and unity, that we may be a light in this world and witnesses of your love. Protect us from the enemy's schemes and let your will be done in our lives. We surrender our hearts, minds, and actions to you, trusting in your perfect plan. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.